Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a very interesting problem with complex numbers. Why do I call it interesting? Because we have a complex number at the base and at the guitar, I mean at the exponent, we have an irrational number. So we're raising a complex number to an irrational power. How irrational can you get, right? Or how complex you can get. So to be able to do this problem, we're going to talk about a couple different things, including the complex logarithm. If you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos, because I made a bunch of videos on basics of complex numbers and always, always ask questions. Okay. If you have any suggestions, let us know in the comment section down below. Now, if you like algebra, number theory, and trigonometry problems, go ahead and check out my other channel. Maybe you came from there. Maybe you already know. All right, so let's go ahead and see how we can do this type of problem. So first of all, we have a number that you should be familiar with at the base, 1 plus i. Why do I say that? Because if you are raising 1 plus i to the second power, that will be fairly easy. Think about it. It will be 1 plus i squared plus 2i, but i squared is negative 1, so that would cancel out, leaving us with 2i. Nice. You know why that's nice? Because it's very easy to raise i to higher powers, so that just translates to 1 plus i being raised to any power. And n doesn't have to be an integer. It could also be rational, but... Of course, we want it to be an integer, let's say, something like 1 plus i to the power 25. You could definitely take advantage of this. Usually do that. Or go to polar form and turn this into polar form. So that's an easy problem because of this fact. And same thing goes for 1 minus i squared. Think about what that means. Okay, but what about this? This is kind of, what is the meaning of raising a complex number? I mean... What is the meaning of 2 to the power root 2, right? Even when you have a really nice integer base. Okay, we can approximate root 2. It's about 1.4, right? So one, uh, one point square root of 2 is actually greater than 1.4. So I can safely say that this is greater than 7 over 5. So 2 to the power root 2 would be greater than 2, over, 2 to the power 7 over 5, which is the fifth root of 128. Whatever that number is, you can use a calculator. But you get the idea? We can approximate, get closer and closer and closer. But this is a irrational number. Not only that, it's also a transcendental number. I'm not exactly sure if I can spell it correctly. I hope I did. But uh, transcendental numbers are a special category of irrational numbers. They cannot be roots of algebraic polynomial equations with rational coefficients. Did I say that right? Hopefully. Anyway, something like that. So, <laughs> for example, square root of 2 is not transcendental because it's one of the roots of x squared minus 2 equals 0 and polynomial with integer coefficients. Okay, something like that. So, pi is transcendental, for example. Anyways, that's just a quick discussion on what we can do with the powers. But now we come back to this and how do you do that? So, we need to talk about the complex logarithm. And even though I said the complex logarithm, it's multi-valued. So when you log a complex number, you do not get a single answer. Make sense? When you log a real number, like ln e, you get one. Single value, right? But when you ln 1 plus i, you don't get a single value, you get a bunch of values, infinitely many. How do we distinguish which one to how do we know which one to choose? You can come up with one, which is called the principal value. We'll talk about that. Okay? But let me tell you how you can do this. Or even before that, how do you raise a complex number to an irrational power? Well, think about it this way. Real numbers are also complex, right? Because complex numbers as a set contains real numbers, right? So... We can talk about a generalization here. Z to the power W, where Z and W are both complex numbers, can be written as E to the power, E is Euler's number, by the way. So this can be written as E to the power W ln Z. So W is multiplied by the natural log of the base. So that gives you the answer. And why is this better? Because we have what's called Euler's formula, 
which is awesome. Let me tell you what it is. E to the i theta, by the way, like I said earlier, if you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos because I go over all of these in my lecture videos. If you think anything is missing from those videos, I can always make additional lecture videos, okay? Just let me know. So that's Euler's formula, and we, this is mind-blowing. This is one of the best, maybe by far the best equation because Euler is the best in my opinion. So this is really a beautiful, beautiful equation. And you can replace theta with pi, pi over two, to see what happens. You're gonna get some interesting results. Anyways, let's get back to this. First, we're gonna use this formula and then use the second formula, okay? So let's go ahead and do first, what? What did we have? One plus i to the power of root two. So let's go ahead and write it as an exponential first, like with the base e. So by definition, it is e to the power root two ln one plus i. And the next thing I need to do is Use the second formula. Actually, I apologize. We're going to use the second formula later. Let me give you the third formula, which we're going to use second. Okay. Does that make it the second formula? Not really. Because this is the first, this is the second, and this is the third. And that is the ln of a complex number. That is ln absolute value of z plus i times the argument of z. By the way, I wrote argument with a capital I, which, capital I, come on. I forgot the alphabet. Capital A, which means this is the principal argument, okay? Or the principal value of the argument. If you write it lowercase, I guess it could be anything, meaning that we can add multiples of two pi, because what happens is, let's say your theta is here, and I can just go ahead and add two pi to it. It's gonna bring me to the exact same point. I can add two pi, I can subtract two pi, always go with multiples of 2 pi, you'll get to the same point. So we express that as plus 2 and pi. So this is kind of like a zero in some way because 2 pi is zero, kind of, right? Okay, so in this sense, then ln 1 plus i is going to be ln absolute value of 1 plus i, which is square root of 2, if you do the math, plus i times, okay, what's the argument of 1 plus i? If you plot 1 plus i real quick, it's going to look like this. And it's going to make an angle of pi over 4 radians because it's an isosceles right triangle and it's modulus we already talked about. Real, imaginary, this is called the argand plane if you're new to it. So i times pi over 4, this is what I meant by the uppercase a, which gives us the principal argument. So if you add, if you add multiples of 2 pi to this, then you can write this in a more general form, which I'm not going to do, but that's basically how it's done. Let's stick to the principal values. So now we can go ahead and use this and replace ln1 plus i with this. You ready? Okay, let's go. 1 plus i to the power root 2 is equal to e to the power square root of 2 multiplied by ln i, which is ln root 2 plus i times pi over 4. That's it. Easy, right? We can even come up with a formula. But guess what? We're not done yet. Because ln root 2 is ln 2 to the power 1 half. We can kind of bring the 1 half to the front. I write it like this. That'll be e to the power root 2 times 1 half ln 2 plus i times pi over 4. And we're still not done because we need to distribute. This is going to be e to the power root 2 over 2 times ln 2 plus i times root 2 pi over 4. And now we can go ahead and separate this into two pieces, e to the power root 2 over 2 ln 2 times e to the power i times root 2 pi over 4. This is where we use Euler's formula. Tada! Where is that formula? The second one. Yes, e to the power i theta is cosine theta plus i sine theta. Now take a look at this because we're finding the exact value. Ready? Cosine, this is my theta by the way, root 2 pi over 4 plus i times sine of root 2 pi over 4. What's the numerical value? I'll show you. But that's the answer. That is 1 plus i to the power root 2. Can you believe that? It's amazing, right? Now let's go ahead and check our results with Wolfram Alpha, where you will see the numerical answer. Okay? Ta-da! Yes, this is our numerical answer. So in other words, 1 plus... Oops. In other words, 1 plus i to the power root 2 is just another 
complex number. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and don't forget to watch CyberMath. And bye-bye.